podcast, you saw me with David, and you saw David didn't look very well. And the reason why it doesn't look well is because of at least 10 years, I guess I thought it was about 8, but it's more actually, 10 years of drugging and chemical compounds by psychiatrists and the people that are supporting him, drugging phenylphalaxine, risperidone, and now they're giving him an injection every month, and we don't know what it is because they won't give us information. We can't get record, we've tried. Um, and they've been drugging him for over 10 years, and the drugging chemical compounds by a psychiatrist and their other treatments will murder a person. This was David when he was a small child. Another photo of him when he was a small child. It's a photo of David when he was small. This one as well. These are my parents who were married for 53 years and they had nine children. And they passed away recently and they were protecting David from them. Them again when they were married. Got some other photos, older photos of them when they were older, but they're over there. <laughs> this is my brothers and sisters and I. There's David there. And there's one missing. She passed away years ago. So there's eight of us there. Now, I wanted to talk about this organisation. There are organisations around the world, this is an international organisation, the CCHR. There's other organisations called um, Mind Freedom International and also um, the peaceful practice of Falun Dafa, Falun Gong, Gong, I think it's called. And they've testified about uh, relentless torture exposed since the persecution began. The Chinese Communist regime has put Falun Gong practitioners through relentless and horrific torture, including electric shocking, force feeding, gang rape, crippling psychiatric abuse, and the forced harvesting of their living organs. <sighs> so these organisations around the world, thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, professional people, victims, families around the world, this organisation has been fighting this issue for 40 years, for 40 years around the world, this is an international organisation, and it's getting worse. It's getting worse because now they want to sterilise children. And the act that they're proposing in Western Australia, the sterilisation of children that they want to do is on page 135 and 136 of the Draft Mental Health Bill 2011. The uh, psychosurgery they want to conduct on 12 year olds and uh, children 12 and older is page 108, 109, 110, 197, 198, 199 and 213 of the Draft Mental Health Bill 2011. The electric shock um, that they want to do on children 12 years and over, 100, 101 pages, 103, 104, 194, 105, the Draft Mental Health Bill 2011. That's the evidence of what they want to do. The um, restraining children taking children from their parents, on page 122, 121, 113 and 246 of the Draft Mental Health Bill 2011. Taking um, children from their parents to lock them up against their will, which they call involuntary commitment, uh, extensively throughout the Draft Bill, pages 21, 22, 35, 19, 107, 36, 53, 54, 183, 185, 190, 191, 213, 214, page 18, page 46, 47, 48, 65, 66, 70, page 73 and page 75 and 77 of the Draft Mental Health Bill 2000. It's to take children away from parents, just like that. Uh, for 14 days without their permission and then periodically for three months at a time to you know, sterilise them, give them psychosurgery, electric shock, murder them with their treatments. And 
to give, for the chief murderer to give instructions to anybody to detain children on page 246, 247, 21, 22 of the draft mental health bill 2011. So they are engaging in genocide and mass murder. They've been doing it for 200 years. 200 years of genocide. 200 years. And the current act in Western Australia, uh, 1996 Act, is sanctioning the work of murder because they murder people with their treatment. And they've been doing it for hundreds of years, 200, over 200 years. Now, this organisation also produces documentaries with professional people testifying and thousands of people involved in testifying and families and victims, the ones that have survived. And um, the best one of these documentaries is called um, Psychiatry Industry of Death and a friend of mine is using it at the moment, borrowing it at the moment, looking at it. So um, that is the best one, the educational research and that is extraordinary. It's one of the best documentaries I've ever seen on any topic and it's absolutely brilliant. And, uh, thousands of people involved in that giving testimonies, giving live testimonies about the horrific practices of psychiatry. Now, I've got a threatening letter from St. Bartholomew's house. Okay, they're stopping me having contact with David. That's where he's living in Kelmscott. This organisation is helping them. They are murdering people, you're helping them. And they threatened me with the police. The police came around my home twice earlier this week trying to save my brother's life, trying to save David's life. Save his life, get his money back, get his car keys back and his licence. And um, $64,000, $64,290.01 Westpac account on the 28th of February. They took that money out of public trust. They've stolen his money and they're forcing him to live on $200 a week. Also, I have, um, I've tried the diplomatic way for 14 months. I've tried the diplomatic way, the, educate, the educated way, the civil way, and they're still drugging him. They won't stop and they've stolen all his money now. So if I've been upset with a few people, well, that's understandable, isn't it? And who's the criminals here? I'm trying to save David's life. My family is trying to save his life because he'll be dead in five years' time if they don't stop. And these people are threatening me with the police. They, every single one of those residents in Kelmscott and the St. Bartholomew's house, if they're being drugged with chemical compounds, which most of them are, pretty sure they are, they will die a premature death. They, they are murdering those people. And a number of them have had their assets and money stolen by the public trust. Now, who's responsible? J.A. Cheney, the President of the State Administrative Tribunal. In the Human Rights Tribunal in Western Australia, in the State Administrative Tribunal, he has been destroying the statutory human rights of hundreds of people, possibly thousands, because of psychiatry. They are acting like psychiatrists. And he revoked over a 12-month period, despite submissions, applications, correspondence from my family, he revoked four family enduring guardian and enduring attorney documents, four, two enduring guardian, family enduring guardian documents that we got for David to try and protect him and, and stop them doing what they're doing, and two enduring power of attorney documents and he destroyed those documents. He also got Peter Sprague of the State Solicitor's Office in Western Australia to help him and other people helping him. So he de deliberately did it to David. He deliberately destroyed, actively deliberately destroyed his statutory rights. He destroyed my family's rights, all of us. We all objected. We all begged them not to, not to do it. He's, David is trapped in that accommodation. And the more they drug him, the sicker and sicker he'll get. Well, that's what happens, that's what they do. They drug them and drug them or their other treatments and then they put them in, lock them up in psychiatric prisons, which is what they are, and they, they give them more drugs and more chemical compounds, which is what they are, and they die, and that's what happens. And in the last hearing, December of 2011, I went in there with the books that I've written and I said to Cheney, 
I said, I'm going to expose what you're doing because this is corruption and it's cruel. It's very cruel what they've done to my brother David and to my family. And you know what he did? He laughed. He laughed. That's what he did. That's how cruel and corrupt he is. And, and I'm going to continue to speak out about this until something's done. Taxpayers' money is being used to employ people who are cruel and corrupt. And he should resign. He should be forced to resign. And he's been doing it to hundreds of people. And it's got to the point so entrenched, this corruption and this practice, that, um, that they have got so many people helping them and doing it. And what you're doing, if you're helping psychiatrists do this, you are supporting the work of murder. And it's happened all over the world, and it's got to stop. And I'm asking everybody in the public to write a one-page letter, take four copies, and send one to the Office of the Commissioner of Police, one to the Triple C, 